Hi everyone. So still talking about binary search tree data structure. We've talked about how to insert into the tree. We've talked about the various traversals you can do of a tree. And now let's talk about its namesake, the search. How do you search the tree? Well, searching is fairly straightforward. What we want to do is we want to know if a target item or a target key is somewhere in the binary search tree. And what's going to make this relatively easy is that this tree is already sorted. The binary search tree property says that uh, if you start at a node, all the values to the left of that node in its left subtree are less than it, and all the values to the right in its right subtree are greater than it. And that makes the search process relatively straightforward. And in fact, either the iterative algorithm or the recursive algorithm, they're both pretty uh, elegant. So let's just kind of make sure we understand how to do the algorithm. What's it going to look like, right? So uh, here's the root of our tree. We've got a bunch of state abbreviations here. And what we want to do is kind of similar to the insert algorithm. Um, we want to check the value that we're searching for and say, is it less than or greater than or equal to the item here? And depending on the answer to that question, that will decide where we go to look next, OK? Um, so if we want to search for Delaware, DE, we're going to start our search at the root, of course. And first, we're going to go where? Well, DE is less than KS. So where's the lesser value is going to be? It's going to be in the left subtree. So we go left. Okay. DE is less than Georgia. Okay, go left. DE is greater than CT, alphabetically. So we go down here. And voila, we've found it, right? So how many nodes do we visit? We visited one, the root, two, three, and then on the fourth node, we actually found it, right? So we visited four nodes here, right? But the logic, the logic is, you know, is the value I'm looking for less than, greater than, or equal to the current node, right? So for Kansas, when we start out, Kansas, well, it's not less than, it's not greater than, it's equal to, right? So we only visited one node there, the root node, okay? How about Louisiana? How many nodes do we visit? Well, we start here, and change the color up, all right? We start uh, here at the root, and LA is greater than KS, so we need to go right. LA is less than PA, so we got to go left. And LA is equal to this value, right? So we visited one, two, three nodes here. Okay. Now, how about a node that's not there, right? And how do we know uh, that the node isn't there? Well, let's walk through it. What should we do? Uh, one more color. How about, what is this, purple? Okay, let's go with purple. NC. So NC is not here. We're going to start our search at the root. NC is greater than KS, so we go right. Okay. We're looking for NC here. NC would be less than PA, so we would go left. NC would be greater than LA, so we would go right. And NC would be greater than ME, right? But we cannot go right here because there is no child of ME, right? So that's how you know when something is not in the binary search tree. When you are looking for it and you need to go in either left or right, but you can't because there's no child there, right? So uh, we visited one, two, three, four nodes and we know because there is no child here but because there is no right child of ME, we know that NC cannot be in this binary search tree, okay? So Iowa is also not in here, and uh, what will happen, we'll go Kansas, Georgia, Hawaii, and then we wanna go right from Hawaii, but we can't. So here also we've gone three, but because there is no right child of Iowa, or excuse me, of Hawaii, we know that Iowa cannot be in this BST, right? 
And this is all made possible because of the way that we inserted into the tree. Because every time we inserted, we maintained that binary search tree property. All right. So um, let's answer these questions down here. How many nodes are in the tree? Uh, quick count will tell you that there's 10 of them. Okay. How many comparisons are required in the worst case? Well, in the worst case, we have to go all the way down to the bottom of the tree. We have to go to the deepest node in the tree. Okay, in this case, in this tree, that deepest node is gonna be four levels deep, right? Maine, Delaware, Arkansas, these are the, is this Arkansas? Yeah, or no, Alaska. These are the, the deepest ones, right? And they have depth one, two, three, um, because they are, you know, you visit four nodes, the root and then them. All right. So how does the number of comparisons relate to the height of the tree? Well, the number of comparisons is the height in the worst case plus one. All right. Uh, I should put worst case in here and I will do that before I give it out to you guys. How does the worst case number of comparisons relate to the height of the tree? Well, it's the height of the tree plus one. Right, the height of this tree is one, two, three. Worst case, height plus one. All right. So, given that, draw a tree for which the big O of search is big O of n. Hmm. Well, that's going to be one of the trees like this, right? Where you've inserted it in order or in a reverse order, and it's just a long chain. Okay. So. Um, that's not a good scenario. So again, hopefully it's kind of apparent that the goal for your tree is that it looks like a tree, that it's not a chain of things. Okay. All right. So let's go write our, let's go revisit our find algorithm here and fill it in. All right. So we're going to search and we're going to search recursively. So let's think in this case, let's think of our base cases first. So what's the base case? Um, well, we're going to just keep calling search on the descending nodes. Okay, so um, if current, if our current node uh, is none, all right, let's think of this case. What happens? Well, um, that's going to be our base case. We're going to say the item is not there. We have called search over and over and over again, and we didn't find it. On the other hand, if cur.data is equal to the target, hey, then we found it, right? Return true, it's in our binary search tree. Otherwise, now we need to do our some other comparisons, right? If the target is greater than data, what do we want to do? We'll search for it in the right subtree. And what are we searching for? We're searching for the target. Here is our recursive call. Else, well, the only other option is that it's less than current.data, so we should search in the left-hand side of the tree. Okay, so this is the recursive structure. Now, the reason I have this cur uh, is none base case is because, you know, I don't look at these left and right nodes before I jump. I'm just saying, hey, jump down into them. And if they are null, if they're empty, return false. Okay? Gives me just a little bit more elegant code on the recursive side if I do it that way. All right, so this is our recursive code. Um, let's hop over to our Python for just a second and implement find. It's gonna look a whole lot, uh, excuse me for a second. It's gonna look a whole lot like that pseudocode we just wrote. So here's find, right? And what we are gonna do is you're gonna use this find method in calls to get item, which supports calls of this form, you know, tree sub the key, give me the thing there. And also contains, right? So you're gonna call find here, okay? So find for us in our tree map is find the key in the tree map and return its associated value. All right, so let's write 
our algorithm. Raise a key error if the key is not in the tree map. Okay, so we're gonna do that same thing where our base case is if we get all the way to a leaf and we try and descend, we wind up calling find where the current node is none. Okay, so if the current node current node is none, what does that mean? It means the key isn't in the map. We've searched for it, but we've not found it. And I tell you in this case, raise a key error, just because this is what a Python dictionary would do. Okay. Else, if the current key, cur.key, the current node I'm looking at, is equal to uh, the key value you're searching for, great, you found it. Uh, what I want you to do is return the value associated with this key. Well, the value associated with the key is stored in current dot value. Current is going to be a tree node okay, from up at the top here. Right? So we're looking at the key and the value of the tree node. All right. Else, okay, if current if the key is less than current.key, where do we go? We gotta go left. So we're gonna call find on the left child where we're looking for the key, okay? The key is our target in this case. Um, but we gotta do something here. Don't forget this step. This is a recursive call. We're descending, we're descending, we're descending, we're descending. And if we find the thing, we're returning it. Okay, so our recursive call is returning something. As the recursive calls start to unwind, you need to also return the results from these recursive calls. Okay, so we're gonna return this all the way back up the chain. Okay, go back to the recursion worksheet from a couple weeks ago. You'll notice we returned the values that kept coming back. Same thing here. All right, finally, uh, the key must be greater than the current key value. So we're gonna return self.find on the right child. Okay, so that'll get us there with find. Now again, what you wanna do is you're gonna wanna use this in your get item and your contains. Right, so let's do contains here just very quickly. Support of the call of the form is x in the tree. Return true if x is a key in the tree and false otherwise. Well, you have this find method. So where do you start searching? You start at the root of the tree. So let's return a call to find on the root of the tree looking for the key. Okay. Oh, excuse me, looking for item. All right, will that do it? I think it should. Okay. Let's give it a shot. Oh, I'm sorry, so we don't want to return here. We want to return true or false. Ugh. Okay, so uh, the way to do this is going to be if find, how do you know if the thing is not in the, in the map? You know it's not in the map because find will raise a key error. So what we should do is we should try, right? We should do some exception handling here. Um, try this, and if a key error happens, return false, okay? Try this, if a key error gets raised, we're gonna catch it and say, false, the key, it's not in there, man, sorry. But if this succeeds, if we do find it, right, contains, this is X in tree, contains is the in keyword. You return true or false, we're not returning a value. So if we get past this, right, if this works, we're gonna return true, okay? All right, so let's run our test, and hopefully our test for contains will pass. Testing for contains, here we go. Looks good, okay? All right, so you will also be able to use this find method here 
in get item. I'm going to leave that part up to you. In the next video, we'll talk about the last thing, which is deleting from the tree.